Here we are looking at the magnitude of the cross product and how it is used to find the area of a parallelogram whose adjacent sides are defined by the two vectors that make up our cross product. So let's take a closer look. Let's begin by exploring the definition of the magnitude. So given two non-zero vectors, vectors u and vector v in space, the cross product of vector u and v has a magnitude defined as follows. So we say that the magnitude of the cross product of vector u and vector v is equal to the magnitude of vector u multiplied by the magnitude of vector v multiplied by sine of theta. And this is where theta is the angle between vector u and vector v. And theta is also restricted. We have that theta is greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to pi. So what we're exploring here is how this definition of the magnitude of the cross product is going to help us find the area of a parallelogram. So we say, same conditions as before, we want to let vector u and vector v be two non-zero vectors in space. Now we want to suppose that vector u and vector v are adjacent sides of a parallelogram such that theta is the angle between them. So let's think about what this looks like. So here is our initial point, and we can say that this is our vector v, and we'll say down here is our vector u, and theta is the angle between them. So using a little vector arithmetic and the parallelogram rule, we can draw the top of our parallelogram. So this vector is equivalent or parallel to vector u, and this other side vector here is parallel to vector v. And so we want to explore how we can use the magnitude of the cross product to find the area of this parallelogram. So the region we're shading here, the area of our parallelogram, is defined as the magnitude of vector u cross vector v square units, of course. So we need to explore this a little bit deeper. Where does this come from? Let's derive this equation. So here we go. We want to verify that the area of a parallelogram who has adjacent sides defined by vector u and vector v, with theta being the angle in between, is equal to the magnitude of the cross product of vector u and vector v. So before we begin, let's simply recall what is the area of a parallelogram? Well, the area of a parallelogram is equal to base times height. So we'll keep this definition, this geometric formula in mind as we proceed. And again, to help us out here, let's think about a visual representation. So we can say here is some vector v, and here is our vector u, with theta being the angle in between them. And then by vector arithmetic and our parallelogram rule, we can define our parallelogram. And again, our job is to find the area of this. We're looking for that region in between. Okay, so thinking about the definition or the geometric formula for the area of a parallelogram and looking at our illustration here, we can see that this is going to be our base. And then the height from the terminal point of vector v. We can drop down until we intersect vector u at a 90 degree angle. So that is representing our height. So looking at this, we can say that the base, of course, is a length. So since the base is associated with the vector u, the length of the base is going to be the magnitude of vector u. But what about this height? We still need to go ahead and define the height. So 
let's take a closer look at that right triangle that we have created here. So we have the hypotenuse, we have our base, and we have the unknown height. So here is our height, here is theta, the angle in between, and how can we define the hypotenuse? Well, since the hypotenuse is associated with vector v, the length of the hypotenuse is the magnitude of vector v. And using a little right triangle trig, we think to ourselves, what trig function has to do with the hypotenuse and the opposite side length? Sine. So we know that sine of theta, of course, is defined as the opposite by the hypotenuse, which here we have the opposite side length is the unknown h, and the hypotenuse length is the magnitude of vector v. So we can solve for the unknown height by multiplying both sides of our expression by the magnitude of vector v. So the height is equal to the magnitude of vector v times sine of theta. And now keeping in mind that we know that the sum of all the angles in our triangle must be 180 degrees, we can even include that this is such that theta is greater than or equal to zero, less than or equal to pi. And we're ready to go, we have the height and we have our base. So let's define the area of our parallelogram. So we can say that therefore, the area of a parallelogram, which of course we know is base times height, and we'll plug in what we've just defined. So our base is the magnitude of vector u, the height is the magnitude of vector v, multiplied by sine of theta, such that theta is greater than or equal to zero, less than or equal to pi, and wait a minute, this is the definition of the magnitude of vector u cross vector v. Woohoo! Oops, we did it! So now we have the area of our parallelogram. We've confirmed where it is coming from, and we're ready to explore some examples.